Grading companies always comes up when I'm talking about many of the collectibles that I deal with. There's good and bad with most grading companies. We're going to look at them. We're going to discuss the options you have as well as whether it's worth it or not. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about grading companies. At some point, if you're into vintage antiques and collectibles, the opportunity to have things graded will pop up. Now, as a lifelong collector of many different things, I never bought a graded item in my life, truthfully. I've never worried about it as a collector. I like to be able to handle the item itself. I don't care if it was mint or not. I just like to have the item for the historical aspect or for childhood delights, things that I had as a child that I miss having or that I enjoyed as a kid. So for me, it's not necessarily the value aspect or the graded aspect. These days, a large number of items are graded. When some of the very first companies came out with grading PSA or CGC or something like that, a lot of people were skeptical back then. They said the exact same things you'll hear today about grading video games and VHS tapes and the whole works. I was never ever a fan on a personal basis of grading in general because it does, it raises the price of many uh, collectibles that are graded in some areas. It does that because these days they've turned in a lot of the collectible markets into investment opportunity. And the only way to get a true fledged investment opportunity out of something is to be able to have a uniform standard for stuff. And that's why grading was so important to get in there to get this going. VHS tapes are one of the newest items. Uh, video games are again another one of those new items. Most of the long-standing companies that grade items have been adding any of these in as well as new companies have been popping up to allow grading. Now, as a personal basis, as I said, I'm not a big, huge fan of grading. But from a business standpoint, again, two different things. My personal preference is one thing and my business preference is something totally different. If I get items in that I can have PSA'd for authenticity on an autograph or something, that's the smartest thing as a business to do because you will almost always get a far larger return on your investment for doing that. It could be the difference between getting three or $400 out of something versus 1500 or more if it's graded. So for us, grading is the best option for many of the collectibles that we run into. PSA is probably my preferred one for most anything that I can grade, PSA. Uh, we're gonna look at these, we'll show you the options that are out there, but overall, if you're a business, you run into comics, trade cards, video games, VHS, rock posters, even action figures, all of that sort of thing can be graded and is graded on a daily basis. And you'll see more and more of them on eBay. The value is there, the profit margins are there, and it's the best way to increase the profits on items that are gradable. Now I'm gonna have some links to these exact pages here as well for those who would like to check them out yourselves. Now I have no connection, I don't get a dime for talking about any of these places out there at all. PSA though is my preferred choice and only because usually you'll get more money out of a PSA graded or authenticated item than you would most of the other ones. They've tried to gobble up the most important or the best graders, the best authenticators. To be able to authenticate something, you've had to have seen a lot of it to begin with. So you have to have people that have been in the industry for a while, and PSA has tried to do that. So that's why I would rely on their grading over the other ones. Again, it's a monetary reason. They do better than most of the other ones when it goes time to resell on them. Now they have club specials and things like that. Most of them do. With PSA, you have to pay for a membership and the whole works. You have to pay for every grading on everything you do, and it's based on the value of the item. Now, if you're going to send in an autograph like we've done, it goes by the actual person you're sending the autograph in. An Elvis autograph can cost you $200 just to authenticate. Other folks may be less, $25, $50. Bucks. It just depends on the specific person you were trying to autograph. They have one of the best assortments of authentication for autographs that I have personally seen. All the items we wanted to be authenticated already had uh, names tied to PSA. So it was an easy process as well. Now CGC, 
CGC is probably the leading one for specifically comic books. If you are going to have a comic book graded, I would have it graded by CGC. They are the premier. They've been around uh, the longest, over 20 years. They are one of the, the kings in this field here. If a, a comic book goes to a high-end auction, chances are it's going to be CGC graded. PSA I would use for autographs. I would use it for trade cards. CGC is good, so don't get me wrong, but PSA for autographs and things, I've had more luck. Higher prices with that. Again, each area may have a different authenticator. CGC right now is trying to get people to come onto the company so they can start grading VHS videotapes too. It was just announced a month or two ago. So they're all trying to get into the game and expand the types of items that they will grade because obviously they will get far more money out of those things. So just an example of some of the comics they have graded. They have go over their guarantees, the process. They've got uh, highest prices realized. Uh, they do other things too, as you can see here. You've got trading cards. You've got magazines. Um, you've got uh, the comic books, obviously. They do posters. Many other things too. Lobby cards, the whole work. So these are all items that you can get. There's a breakdown on here too. Again, the links to all these sites will be there in the description box at the header. So PSA is good. CGC is good. Uh, another one, IGS. Now, IGS does VHS tapes. They're one of the more well-known ones. They're one of the first ones to jump into this realm of grading VHS tapes. I know a lot of people are upset with the whole aspect of it. I know there's conversation on the fact that if it's a VHS tape and it's sealed, you have no way to know if the tape would even play. It may be demagnetized. There may be nothing left on it. It may have been erased accidentally. Who knows? All you're grading then is just a box with a, a possible blank tape in it. I understand all of that. Um, but this, again, comes into the ploy that these are investors in here as opposed to uh, basically uh, collectors. Collectors in this area don't usually care so much about the grading aspect of it. The true diehards, they buy the VHSs to play the ones that I know. We know people who have thousands of VHS tapes, so it, it's a huge area. They're basically what um, some of the other companies are to like trading cards, and they even state that in here somewhere, uh, but they're VHS tapes. It's everything you want about grading, but again, it's just VHS tapes, and they have to be sealed. CGC will have them. There's other ones as well that will have them. Here's VHS DNA, and this is part of the Beckett uh, connection here. Now, Beckett we'll look at in just a second here, but they do the same basic principle. They're a grading place. They encapsulate for archiving and the whole work. So this is a huge fad right now. Every big company out there who has the potential to grade VHS tapes is hopping on the bandwagon because it does appear as if it's going to be the next big fad. Now, how long it will last, we have no idea, but there are a uh, big, huge area of interest for having VHS tapes graded. There's still a bunch of them out there that are sealed. I still run into them, even at thrift stores on occasion, still sealed. And some of these were from clearance bins, which were, again, still sealed. Now, here's Beckett's Sports Entertainment as well. Now, they do non-sports trading cards. You can see a Pokemon here, it looks like, at the end, I would gather, or maybe a Magic the Gathering or something, but they'll do it all. The number one card grading service in the industry. That's what Beckett says. Again, other ones will be just as acceptable. A PSA, a CGC are just fine. In fact, in my opinion, those are better than a Beckett's when, it, again, it comes time to resell. That's, again, my opinion. You might have different results, but that's what my personal results I've seen uh, from, again, looking through tons and tons of listings. There's nothing wrong with, with Beckett's at all. It's a little cheaper. Their service is about the same as any of the other ones. It just is a, a different company. And again, it depends on who you are. Some people may only want Beckett's certification or grading. Other people may only want CGC. IGS or PSA. It, it just depends on what you're having graded as to where you want to send it. Now, WADA does games. This is a video game company. They grade video games. There's a bunch of information on here. They go over the cases, the tamper-proofness, you know, the values as well. So this is a pretty good company for video games. Now, I've never sent in a video game to have graded. I don't really mess with video games unless it's vintage games and unless it's something that, you know, obviously I can resell. 
I'm not a big video game buff these days. I've had them in the past. When I was a child, Atari 2600 came out. So that's that's the games, and then Nintendo came out shortly after that. But all of them are gradable. Some uh, graded video games have went for some phenomenal, crazy prices, uh, all the way up to almost a million dollars, I want to say, I've seen some go for. So there's a huge market for all of these. Now, they also state, let me back up here, they list on what they grade and the whole works. Now, not every game out there can be graded, of course. Most of the sites as well will have populations, so you can tell how many of each grade was graded by the company. Now, some of them offer that information for free. Some you have to be a member. It just depends, again, on which service you are using. As you can see, I've already shown you six. We're going to show you one more, and this isn't anywhere near all of them. There's way more than this. They're smaller companies. Everybody's trying to get into the game now. Now, this is Video Game Authority. Now, they do uh, action figures, collectible dolls, die casts, and again, you see here VHS as well. Video games you can see up here at the top. Now, this is a group of many different like sub companies I would gather in, in that regard. So you can look at it that way. Lots of content here. You can see the submission. You can see the values of it. So I would pay attention to all of those aspects. Now, they all grade on the same basic scale. It's all like a basic uniform scale, but each company may have some different unique aspects of those scales. So you got to be a little careful. Now, again, it's going to depend on you yourself as to which one you are going to use. I would honestly recommend if you do plan on sending some stuff in to look at which company gradings go for the most in the area that you are looking to grade. So if it's VHS, I would compare the different grading companies' prices, sold prices on eBay, and see for yourself which ones will give you the highest amount of return for your investment. Now you got to look at the investment. You got to look at the initial cost of the service as well as if it's a membership such as PSA. All that comes into play for your grading costs. You have to also take into consideration the time. Some of these sites can take 45 days, two months even, to get your item back. And in some cases, in some markets, the markets are fluctuating left and right constantly. Some could crash. Magazines, for an example. I sold a magazine that at one time was selling in the 4,000 range at the decline of it. If I would have sent it in, it's possible I may have gotten hardly anything for that magazine, just again, because it was crashing as I was debating the whole process. We ended up selling it for like twelve or $1,300, but the point is, in some cases, you're going to have to be very careful on the time consideration. So just take that into mind. I know people have sent in pretty much any type of collectible, as well as us, and they've always done extremely well. Again, it takes time. It's an investment into your, your purchases as well. If you spend $200 on a comic book and then maybe 150 to have it graded, you just up the amount of, of investment into that item. So you, again, only send in items that are worth it. I see people sending in cards and comic books. By the time you factor into the grading in some comic books, it wouldn't be worth you doing that. You could have gotten just as much, maybe even a little more, by not grading and letting somebody else worry about it. So only grade the items that are actually worth grading. If you see graded versions of something going for $1,000 more than a non-graded version, obviously something like that would be something you would need to grade to maximize your return on your investment. If you're doing this as a business, it comes down to where are you going to make the most money? Your personal opinions on it as a collector should not come into play when you're looking at it from a business aspect. That's, that's my take on it. Don't let your personal feelings affect your business decisions in that way because, again, you're going to get more for most of your items if they are graded and graded by the right company, graded properly, and the whole works. So grading, in my opinion, as a business is essential. As a collector, for me, it is not. I do not look for graded anything these days. Unless, again, it's dirt cheap and I'm going to buy it to resell. I don't do it for personal use. I like to physically be able to touch the items that I have in any of the collections we have. Part of the enjoyment to me of collecting is being able to look at the inside of a comic book or to be able to hold a button or a collectible of any kind. 
that's the key aspect if you're into toys yeah if it's able to be removed from a case it's a different story but if it's sealed in a case for protection and all this all you can do is look at it you can't touch it you can't play with it you can't do any of that aspect to it but anyway that's what i have for you today well there we have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Look, it's the first cough of the cold season. Oh, my. See, a scratchy-throated rasper. <coughs> it's very rare. And look, a blue-beaked hacker. <coughs> oh, and it's a big one. Your first cough this season may be a big one. And that means Vicks Formula 44 Extra Strength Cough Mixture with a cough suppressant as effective as codeine but not narcotic. If you can't get away for the cold season.